Hello, I'm Marianne Mashiri. A very warm welcome to The Daily Global on BBC News. Let's start in the Middle East, where in the last hour, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said Israel will not be satisfied with anything other than total victory over Hamas. He also said Israeli troops have been ordered to prepare to operate in Rafah in southern Gaza. Let's listen to some of what he had to say. Tonight I am here to tell you one thing. We are on our way to a complete victory. The victory is at our reach. It's not about years or decades, it's about months. The IDF is doing wonderful work. It's working systematically in order to achieve all of the goals of the world that we, the, at the political ranks, have given it, which is re relinquishing Hamas, releasing the hostages, and making sure Gaza is not threatening Israel anymore. To begin with, I said that the final victory is our goal. This was the decision I brought to the government at the beginning of the war, and we we will not take, we will not be satisfied with less on the next half an hour, we're expecting to hear from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken following his talks with Israeli and Palestinian officials. Now, those talks come after what many people see as a positive reaction from Hamas to a proposed ceasefire deal which was put together last week. But Mr Blinken has now met both the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, and President Isaac Herzog and has described a ceasefire deal as both possible and essential. Well, some reports suggest the plan provides for a truce of at least 40 days in return for the release of civilian hostages held by Hamas. For now, though, the war, which broke out in October, continues. The Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza said at least 100 people were killed overnight and there has been heavy, further heavy bombing of southern cities, including in Rafah. Meanwhile, Israel says 31 of the hostages held by Hamas and other groups in Gaza are now known to have died. Well, let's hear now from Mr. Blinken about the ongoing hostage situation. The hostages are foremost uh, on our minds and in our hearts. Uh, and uh, as, as you know, uh, we now have a, a response from Hamas to the proposal that was uh, put on the table. We're way forward. We're looking at it intensely. Well, Gershon Baskin was an Israeli negotiator for 17 years. He gave his assessment on the ceasefire negotiations. The Hamas response does enable some room to maneuver if Hamas would be willing to separate the first phase from the second and the third. In other words, if Hamas wants a ceasefire now for 45 days, which is something that I think the Israeli army would like as well, this could be done and we could see the release of civilian hostages from Gaza those who were remaining alive. Well, with me now is BBC's Chief, Chief International Correspondent, Lise Doucette. And Lise, a difficult job for Mr Blinken. This puts him in a very, very tough position. All we've had is these very public remarks by Prime Minister Netanyahu, a ferocious rebuke to these really incessant efforts by the United States and its Arab partners to come up with a plan. And it's hard to square Prime Minister Netanyahu's description of the Hamas counteroffer as delusional with the remarks we heard yesterday from the Qatari Prime Minister, a key mediator in these talks. He described it as positive. Uh, Antony Blinken, in his first remarks, we'll wait to hear from him shortly, he had said that it was the best way forward, a lot of work still to be done, but trying to give a sense that there was still something to work for. But listening to Prime Minister Netanyahu, you had a feeling that this was dead in the water. Now, he may be saying that for public effect. It is known, you know, sources say that sometimes in private negotiations, he adopts a different tone and a greater readiness to consider proposals. But the Israelis seem to see this as an effort by Hamas to end the war on its own terms, which is utterly unacceptable. But it's interesting what Gershon Baskin said, which is which goes to the heart of the matter now. Is it possible to salvage something from this proposal? The Hamas counteroffer is a three-phased one over about 135 days. And the first phase, which would include a, a temporary pause of about 45 days, would release the most vulnerable of the hostages, women, children, the elderly, the ones of which there is greatest concern about, greatest, there's concern about all of them, but those first in exchange for some prisoners and some desperately needed humanitarian aid. But we may get it, we'll see just what kind of a tone 
um, Antony Blinken adopts. Uh, it's, it's very, because this is all there is right now. Mm, and it's all about tone, isn't it, really? Because if you heard the tone of Mr Netanyahu, you could feel there that there was no conciliatory element in his tone at all. But there never is. His mantra has not shifted an inch. Total victory. Absolute victory. And tonight he said it was within touching distance. It was a matter of months. Now, as you know, when you've reported on your program, there had been assessments by his own military team that actually they weren't that close, that Hamas was actually even in the north of the Gaza Strip, which has been razed to the ground, where Israeli forces in large part moved away from to concentrate on the south, Hamas was re-establishing civilian control. Hamas is still able to fire rockets at Israel. And of course, alarm bells are ringing right up to the UN Secretary General. Antonio Guterres said, if you carry out what you say is your plan then to go for Rafah at the southernmost corner, where half of the population has been pushed, this would be the disaster of disasters. In the meantime, people are still dying in Gaza. Uh, we saw the Hamas run health minister saying over 100 were killed uh, just in the last, I think, day or so. Over 27,000 Palestinians. And, of course, there are still Israeli hostages being held there. I mean, this is the... I mean, Marion, we just reported that 100 died. You know, before all this, if one person died, it would have been a story. Now, given the enormity of this staggering death toll, the United Nations says that if you try to tally up the dead the missing and the injured, it's actually 100,000 people, which some 17,000 children having, one, having lost one or both parents. That's a 5% of Gaza's population. And Prime Minister Netanyahu and the public opinion in, in Israel backs him. They want him to hit Hamas hard as well, uh, are saying they want this war to continue. But tonight, of course, we've heard of the anguish of the families of the hostages. They, of course, have been... There's been that blow that 31 families were told their loved ones are dead. That's a fifth of the hostages in Gaza. So tonight, they are urging the Prime Minister and others again to put the lives of the hostages first before the military plan.